gospel passage in terms of knowing that to be a follower of Christ means ultimately perhaps to lay down your life. And she did just that. And a little bit about her life. Edith Stein was born to a Jewish family uh, at Breslau on October 12, 1891. She was the youngest of 11 children. Her father died when she was two years old. And her hardworking and devout mother took over the care of her large family and timber business. However, Edith did not keep the strong faith of her mother, Judaism, and eventually declared herself an atheist, saying, deliberately and of my own free will, I turned away from prayer. She was a talented student, and after finishing school with top results, she chose to study philosophy where she encountered many new ways of thinking which challenged her religious experiences and decisions. Edith graduated and continued her philosophical study, achieving a doctorate degree. During this time, she went to Frankfurt Cathedral one day and saw a woman with a shopping basket going in to kneel for a brief prayer. She later wrote, This was something totally new to me. In the synagogues and Protestant churches, people simply went to the service. Here, however, I saw someone coming straight from the marketplace into an empty church, as if she was going to have an intimate conversation. It was something I never forgot. She found herself searching after the truth. One day, when she went to visit a young Protestant widow she had known, but felt uneasy about what to say to comfort her, she was surprised at the faith of the young widow and said, this was the moment when my unbelief collapsed and Christ began to shine his light on me. One night during the summer of 1921, she found herself spending several weeks at the home of a fellow philosopher and his wife. She happened to pick up the autobiography of St. Teresa of Avila and read it all through the night, saying to herself as she finished reading, this is the truth. On January 1st, 1922, Edith was baptized and received into the Catholic Church, but it was a decision that her mother never accepted as long as she lived. Edith continued teaching philosophy and writing and held dreams of finding a husband in a happy marriage. However, as darkness began to break over Germany in the 1930s, she sensed another call to unite her life with the fate of her own Jewish people. Nazi laws made it impossible for her to continue teaching, so she entered the Carmelite Monastery of Cologne on October 14, 1933. She said, human activity cannot help us, but only the suffering of Christ. It is my desire to share it. Edith took the name Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. As the anti-Semitism of the Nazis grew, in 1938, Edith was smuggled across the border into the Carmelite convent of Echt in Holland. However, as the war escalated and Holland was occupied, the danger for Jews spread to that country. In August 1942, as a retaliation against the protests of Dutch bishops for the treatment of Jews, many Jewish Christians were arrested, including Edith and her sister Rosa, who had also converted and was living at the Carmel Monastery in Eck. <laughs> Edith's last words heard in Eck were addressed to her sister Rosa as they were arrested. Come, we are going for our people. They were transported to the concentration camp at Auschwitz, where Edith and the others were gassed, their bodies cremated on August 9th. St. Teresa Benedicta was beatified by Pope John Paul II on May 1st, 1987. He said at the time, We bow down before the testimony of the life and death of Edith Stein, an outstanding daughter of Israel, and at the same time a daughter of the Carmelite Order, Sister Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, a personality who united within her rich life a dramatic combination in our own century. It was the combination of a history 
full of deep wounds that are still hurting, and also the combination of the full truth about man. All this came together in a single heart that remained restless and unfulfilled until it finally found rest.